Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. The time is 7.14 p.m. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Management of Emeryville Services Authority. This meeting is being conducted pursuant to exemptions to the Brown Act authorized by Assembly Bill 361 during the COVID emergency. The state has authorized local municipalities to conduct their meetings via video conference, provided that the state of emergency is in place and that we find that it's in the health, safety, and welfare of the public, our staff, and ourselves to conduct our meetings via video conference. Members of the public may participate in all of tonight's meetings using the raise hand feature on Zoom or pressing star nine on their telephone. You may also submit written comments in advance of tonight's meeting or during the meeting, going to the City of Emeryville's website and selecting the council agendas page and selecting the link that allows you to submit a message to the clerk. The clerk will read those messages at the appropriate time when called for at public comment. I'd like to begin by asking, or also noting for the record that uh, Council Member Welch, uh, pursuant to City Council Member Rules, has notified the mayor of the need for an excused absence this evening, and the mayor has excused her absence from all of tonight's meetings. This time I'll ask for the clerk to please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Here. Council Member Martinez? Here. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Here. And Mayor Bowders? Here. Thank you, members. Uh, next, I'll entertain a motion to approve this agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Martina, second by Medina to approve the agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. The agenda being approved. We'll move now to ex parte communications. Are there any to report this evening? Member Martinez? I um, saw Mr. Budenhagen at the Harvest Festival and prematurely welcomed him to the city. We allow that. Anyone else? Okay, with that, ex parte communications are complete. Item five is public comment for consent items or items not on the agenda. We'll allow two minutes for public comment for this meeting. Do we have any written comment cards this evening? No, Mayor, we do not. Okay, please recognize Brian Donahue for two minutes. Good evening. Is this, a, is this a council meeting? No. Okay, I'll wait for the council meeting. Is that coming in a, mo in a few moments? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then any other person who wishes to comment on the uh, management of Emeryville Services Authority meeting? Okay, seeing none, public comment is now closed. We'll move to the consent calendar. Are there any questions or comments on the consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, is there a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Motion by Martinez, second by Medina to approve consent calendar. Please call the roll. Council member Donahue. Aye. Council member Martinez. Aye. Council member Welch is absent. Vice mayor Medina. Aye. And mayor Bowders. Aye, consent calendar has been approved. Item 7.1 is a resolution of the board of directors of Mesa approving an agreement on employment between Mesa and Paul Buddenhagen for the city manager position and authorizing the chair of the board of directors to execute said agreement. I'd like to invite Trish, uh, is she up here yet? Trish Raber to come on up and uh, make a very brief presentation, please. Good evening, Trish. Good evening. Uh, so Adam Pollitzer has been serving as the interim city manager since August 1st, while an executive search was in process to fill the city manager position on a permanent basis. The executive search produced over 25 candidates with an extensive interview process for those selected as best qualified. Paul Buddenhagen was selected to fill the city manager position as his qualifications most closely met the needs of the city. An employment agreement with the terms and conditions of Mr. Buddenhagen's employment are attached to the proposed resolution recommending the Mesa board's approval to appoint Paul Buddenhagen as city manager beginning on January 17th, 2023. Thank you for that report, members. We're gonna um, welcome and introduce Mr. Buddenhagen at the regular city council meeting. So this is a parallel uh, vote because the Mesa board is also the employer of the city manager. Um, is there any questions for Ms. Raver? Seeing none, if a member of the public wishes to comment on this Mesa item, they'll have two minutes to do so. Do we receive any written comment cards? No, Mayor, we did not. Okay, public comment is closed. Um, I would like to lay a motion on the table to approve this contract for employment to Paul Buddenhagen. Is there a second to my motion? A second. There's a motion and a second. Ms. Raver, would you please, uh, in compliance with any PERS and other legal requirements, provide any contract terms to the public that need to be named? There are co no contract terms that need to be named. Okay, they're sufficiently contained in the record, that's what I'm hearing? Correct. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, Madam Clerk, there's a motion by Mayor Bowders and a second by Vice Mayor Medina to approve this contract. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. Contract is approved. We'll return to this item in the council meeting and have a more thorough discussion. Item 7.2 is a resolution of the Board of Directors making the findings necessary to conduct MESA meetings pursuant to AB 361. Are there any discussion or questions? Seeing none, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. I'll second. Motion by Martinez, second by Medina to approve this resolution. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye, the resolution is approved. Madam Clerk, the time is 7.19 p.m. and I'm adjourning the meeting. And for the benefit of the public, we have one last short meeting before the council meeting. Madam Clerk, the time is 7.20 p.m. Today is November 1st. I'm calling to order the City of Emeryville as the successor agency to the Emeryville Redevelopment Agency. I've previously given the admonition related to AB 361. Please note that all members except Member Welch are present. Member Welch has an excused absence provided for under council rules. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. I'll second. Motion by Martinez, second by Medina to approve agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye, the agenda has been approved. Are there any ex parte communications? Seeing and hearing none, now is the time for public comment on the redevelopment agency. Any member of the public who wishes to comment will have two minutes to do so. I see no hands. Do we receive any comment cards for the redevelopment agency? No, Mayor, we did not. Thank you, April. The comment period is over. We move to consent. There are two items on consent. Are there any questions? Seeing and hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Martinez, second by Donahue to approve the consent calendar. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. We have one action item. It's an AB 361 finding for the redevelopment agency. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, is there any public comment on AB 361, item 7.1 for this agenda? Seeing and hearing none, is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there a motion? Move the resolution. Second. Motion by Martinez, second by Donahue to approve this resolution. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. The resolution is approved. The time is 722, Madam Clerk. I'm adjourning this meeting. Okay, we're now at the City Council meeting. Thank you everybody for joining us this evening. Today is Tuesday, November 1st, 2022, and the time is 722 p.m calling to order the City Council of the City of Emeryville's general meeting. Please note that this meeting is being conducted pursuant to exemptions to the Brown Act authorized by AB 361 and detailed further earlier in this evening. Public comment is allowed by Zoom using the raise hand feature, or you can press star nine by phone, or you can submit an electronic comment to the clerk in advance of tonight's meeting or during the meeting going to the city's website and the council agenda page. Please note that Council Member Welch has an excused absence under council rules as provided for and approved by the mayor this evening. Otherwise, all members remain present from the prior meetings. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve this agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Medina, second by Donahue to approve the agenda. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Hi, thank you. The agenda has been approved. Item four, special orders of the day. We have three. Um, first, I just want to check if there's any raised hand from the audience. Is there somebody here from United Against Hate Week? I don't believe we have someone coming from that group. Okay, the proclamation for the United Against Hate Week is provided for in today's agenda and it's linked there. United Against Hate Week, Emeryville has participated in that since 2018. Um, and United Against Hate Week will be November 13th to 19th. 2022 in the city of Emeryville stands united with our other Bay Area cities and partners united against hate. We welcome folks to um, go to the United Against Hate website and learn about activities and events to support uh, marginalized community members among us in the East Bay and how you can help. I would like to also just briefly check on item 4.3. Is there anybody here from the small business Saturday group? 
seeing none, um, Small Business Saturday, I will also forego reading this proclamation this evening, is um, asking everybody here in Emeryville to support patronizing small businesses on the, uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, um, which has traditionally been a day in which small businesses are supported by local communities to help remind folks that it's not just big box stores that are out there helping um, drive the local economy. And we want to thank the advocates who um, brought that to our attention. I'm going to turn now to item 4.2 and I'm going to read one proclamation this evening, which is a proclamation of the City Council of the City of Emeryville in support of human rights in Iran. And while I'm reading this proclamation, I'd like to ask if the City Clerk would please promote uh, Kave Niazi and Yale Niazi, who are both, um, uh, oh, I see Yale is there. I know that they had a couple meetings to go to. Um, okay, I'm going to go through our proclamation for the evening. Proclamation of the City Council. Uh, let's stay on, I'm going to put you on mute until we're ready to talk. There we go. Proclamation of the City Council of the City of Emeryville in support of human rights in Iran, including the immediate cessation of human rights abuses on the demonstration, the demonstrators in Iran, and the immediate release of political prisoners and prisoners of conscience in Iran. Whereas the city of Emeryville is on record in support of human rights, women's rights, and in solidarity with our Iranian community, but in Emeryville and Iran, and whereas the city of Emeryville celebrates our Iranian community and culture that adds to our city's rich diversity and history and culture, and whereas Nazreen Sotude, widely recognized as Iran's Mandela, is currently serving a 38-year prison sentence with 148 lashes, although currently on medical furlough for them, um, a distinguished lawyer and a human rights advocate, an activist, Satude has become a symbol of the Iranian people's nonviolent struggle for justice, dignity, and equality in Iran. And whereas women in Iran are systemically subject to an apartheid state with much harsher restrictions than men, as exemplified by the murder of Masa Amini, along with other women protesting her death by the Islamic, Re Islamic Republic of Iran's security forces. And whereas many individuals have been imprisoned, tortured, and executed, for being defenders of human rights by the Islamic Republic of Iran. Many demonstrators are being subjected to such torment now. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Emeryville that we ask for an immediate cessation of the human rights abuses against the Iranian people, and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Emeryville that we support the immediate release of Nazreen Satude and all other, politi all other political prisoners and prisoners of conscience in the Islamic Republic of Iran and be it further resolved by the City Council of the City of Emeryville that we affirm its support for the human rights in Iran, including equal rights for women, the LGBTQ plus community, and minorities, and the end of apartheid against women and targeted religious, non-religious, and cultural minorities. Proclaimed by the Mayor and the City Council of the City of Emeryville at a regular meeting held Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. And I would like to invite our two guests who brought this uh, proclamation forward. Uh, Kave and Yale, and to invite them to have a couple moments. Um, this is no, thank you, Mayor. This is Yale Niazi. Um, I'm at the um, uh, El Cerrito meeting as well. It's very exciting because no three cities are passing this uh, on the same night. So I am going to go as quickly as possible. I can't close the door on that. Um, so thank you, Mayor Bowders and Emeryville City Council for this opportunity to declare my solidarity with the evolving revolution in Iran for basic human rights led by women and the youth demanding a free, democratic, and just society as they chant woman life freedom, Zen, Zendigi Ozadi. My name is Jolly Niazi. I'm a pediatrician in Berkeley serving the Bay Area communities. It has now been 45 days since the massive demonstrations in Iran have started, sparked by the death of Massa Amini. But as the world renowned civil rights lawyer uh, Nasri Mesutuda said, this really embodies by itself the 43 years of pain that women have endured in this country. Unfortunately, many demonstrators, including children, have been murdered by the brutal militarized police, and the violence is only worsening. Last Saturday, after massive demonstrations around the country against the regime, 20 universities were raided. Some in the middle of the night, students and healthcare workers were attacked and killed. Artists were arrested, and many are being torched in their dungeons. More recently, several thousand have been charged, and their death sentences already issued. So what can we do outside the country? Your resolution adds to a growing number of city resolutions standing up for human rights, in particular women's rights, uh, started in the city of Berkeley in 2021. I very much thank you for this, Mayor Bowders. Bear Salimi, the esteemed panel mayor, has championed the cause 
of um, res uh, resolutions for all cities in Contra Costa County. I hope Alameda County, which was the starting point for our resolution, can mimic this. Time is of the essence, and as more cities in California add on to this movement, we hope to attract the attention of the regime as well as people and governments outside of the country. Governments can deport Iranian ambassadors and freeze the assets of the responsible parties. We hear that the culprit families are leaving en masse to foreign countries along with the treasury of Iran. Don't provide them safe havens. Governments can also ask the UN to put pressure on the regime with resolutions and pushing to inspect prisons, as well as removing the Islamic Republic off the Women's Rights Commission. The people in charge have to be held accountable. Individuals can share repeatedly on their platforms news about Iran. Schools can make similar pictures of girls next to blackboards. Universities, medical societies, and businesses can make solidarity statements. Much can be done for very little cost to us here. I thank you for a lot of time. Zanz and Nikki Azadi, Women, Life, Freedom. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ale. And I would like to uh, invite uh, Kabe now to speak briefly. Honorable Mayor Bowders, can you hear me? We can. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening to Honorable Mayor Bowders, Honorable Vice Mayor Medina, and Honorable Council Members of Emeryville. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address your meeting in order to commend you for your proclamation and support of Nassinez Sotude and of human rights. My name is Kaveh Niazi. I'm a high school instructor and a longtime resident of the Bay Area. I was a student at Berkeley High and attended University of California Berkeley as an undergrad and graduate student. My training is in Islamic history and I'm a published author on the subject. I speak to you regarding the human rights situation, uh, which consists of many Iranians risking their lives, particularly in the past month and a half, to demand their basic human rights. The spark that led to the upheaval was the shocking and cold-blooded murder of Mass Amini, a young Kurdish woman on September 16th. Ms. Amini was arrested by the morality of her police who objected to the manner in which she was wearing her scarf before, her, before, deliver, before having her body delivered to her bereaved family several days later. Sadly, such events, arrests by the so-called security apparatus, followed by the death of the detainee, are rather routine in the Islamic Republic, where the security apparatus can, will, and for 40 years has acted with impunity against the defenseless civilian population, particularly against its women. Viewing news from Iran night after night tells me that many in Iran have reached a state in which they feel they have nothing to lose and are thus willing to sacrifice their very lives in order to secure human rights reforms for future generations. While interfering in Iranian affairs by governments on the national level is futile and may well backfire, support from entities such as municipalities have, ha, has a much uh, greater uh, a chance to bolster the cause of self-rule and democracy, as can be seen by the successful campaign that was spearheaded by Moscow, demanding an end to apartheid and the release of Nelson Mandela. Uh, in the West, it is a matter of course to recognize the importance of providing a space for Muslim women to follow the tradition, their traditions of modesty and dress. And um, uh, the young women in Iran are demanding a similar space to control what they wear without the arbitrary and often deadly consequences that may befall them uh, should they fail to meet the standards set by a corrupt and self-serving government run by aging men. The hateful and misogynist, misogynistic slogan, Yoru Sari, Yotu Sari, uh, uh, wear a scarf or, or your head will be bashed in, which was what meant Iranian women fighting to secure their rights after the fall of the Shah, is what has relegated half of Iran's population to a permanent status as secondary citizens in their own country. They're demanding that their voices be heard as human beings with the full deg dignity that is their due and with their full set of inalienable rights by passing the resolution demanding the release of Nassina Sotude and supporting women's rights in Iran, the city of Emeryville Emeryville has signaled its commitment to democracy and justice in our increasingly interconnected world, for which I thank you. And thank right. you for the opportunity. You're very welcome. I want to thank you and um, I want to thank you and the others who are um, organizing and structuring this advocacy from the local level to support Iranian women. Um, freedom and human rights there for your advocacy and your work on behalf of those voices who are not able to be here today to speak for themselves. Are there any members of council who wish to comment on the proclamation or the item? Member Donahue. Uh, it's been many years ago as a young person in my, I just turned 20. I traveled to Iran when the Shah was in power. We're talking a long time ago. And uh, the country of Iran is diverse in its geology and there's a lot of natural beauty 
and the diversity within its borders of cultures is huge. Their history is so dramatically long and rich. Unfortunately, this country in the early 1950s prevented their democratically elected government from continuing on. Our country is culpable for some bad history with Iran. And uh, we ended up creating the, the Shah, a dictator, and having their, the Iranian people's choice uh, overruled with a kind of support for a coup that we supported. And, uh, you know, it's a sad thing to say about our country that we in the past have this history. And I'm pleased that we are supporting the idea of democracy now. I fear as a country, our credibility is pretty low with so much of the population in Iran. Uh, we have benefited from the emigration out of Iran to our country. We have so many talented, good people from Iran who have settled here. and. Uh, it's such a mixed history. But so I'm just reporting my experience because I think that our relationship with Iran really should be improved somehow in the future. I and mean, it just, every year it just seems to get worse. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you, Member Donahue. Member Martinez? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for bringing forward this opportunity to call out and condemn violent extremism um, abroad and at home, um, especially in the name of religion. But this, what's happening in Iran could easily happen in this country as well. So I, I think it's important to um, stand in solidarity with the people and the women of Iran. Uh, once again, I just want to thank the advocates who brought this to my attention. I'm happy to have put this uh, on the council agenda for this evening. And I think uh, we heard from two members of the council, both really um, excellent perspectives on the complicated um, history here. As a graduate student, I uh, spent one year in graduate school studying um, Arab-Israeli relations. And um, the history, as Member Donahue noted, of this region is um, extremely complex and the people of Iran are a extremely beautiful and diverse group of people um, who one day I hope um, enjoy the same human rights and freedoms that we all have. Um, they deserve that. So with that, we will uh, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is item five, the announcement of commission and committee vacancies. April Richardson. Yes, Mayor, just wanted to let the council know that the uh, committee recruitment is open and applications are due on November 21st. Thank you, April. Item six is council member special announcements or reports on meetings and attendance. Member Martinez, do you have anything to report tonight? Okay, Vice Mayor Medina, do you have anything you wish to report? Member Donahue, do you have anything you wish to report? I have several items to report. First, I wanna congratulate and thank the, the students um, at Emory Unified School District's high school. They came to the Alameda County Healthy Homes Department to give a presentation. They participated with a group called eBays. That sounds like eBays, but it's eBays. It's an environmental justice group. Um, they received mentorship and support and the students there actually took uh, lead uh, soil samples and they did lead testing. They learned how to do lead testing of soil samples in East Oakland, West Oakland and they sampled every property on 47th Street in Emeryville. Um, and while, although the lead levels in um, East and West Oakland were much higher in terms of a percentage of total samples, uh, we did uh, learn from the presentation that a significant number of homes on 47th Street, on the north side of 47th Street in particular, have um, far higher than what is considered uh, safe by the CDC, toxic levels of lead in soil samples. So 80 parts per billion is considered an unsafe lead level in soil, um, as opposed to blood or other types of materials where it can be detected. Um, and in some of these cases, we had between 110 and 200 parts per billion in the soil um, on residential properties in our, in our city. Um, we recommended as a board that that presentation be forwarded to the County Board of Supervisors who oversees the ability to um, 
assess the lead assessment that we all pay as property owners and homeowners in our, in our county to remediate lead. And so I want to just extend my, my appreciation to the science teachers and the other folks who were there and then the students who took an active interest in participating in learning about their community and bringing scientific information to the benefit of all of us. I also want to thank our, our stellar and spooky staff. Um, so we had Halloween was yesterday and um, the students from the Emeryville Child Development Center got to go trick-or-treating at City Hall. Uh, all of the council members you see here were, um, hey there Ashby, all the council members you see here were in uh, full uh, Incredibles garb. Scott had a hat on at one point that made him look a little bit like Zorro, but uh, he did pass as an Incredible and uh you know his diy costume is always my favorite but uh, we did give out candy and little gifts to all of the very cute and spooky uh, kids from ecdc i also want to make a couple other announcements i want to congratulate uh assistant city manager pedro jimenez city attorney john kennedy i want to uh, congratulate maggie over in the planning department who won the pumpkin decorating contest for second and third place prizes. So um, I understand that they're getting some um, little gifts of their own, but the council uh, was not told whose pumpkins were who, but we selected the three that we thought were the best from the staff submissions. So staff who didn't submit this year, I hope you do next year. And then a very special congratulations to Nancy Humphrey, who uh, was unanimously selected as best staff costume. And she came as a protected bike lane, which you know is a fan favorite for a town like this. We, we, we loved it. So Nancy walked away with a large uh, red velvet nothing bun cake. Um, which conveniently arrived right when we were selecting the winner. And we won't go into that story, but um, congratulations again to Nancy. And I hope that uh, some of those pictures will circulate among the staff who weren't able to join us. But I want to thank the staff for, for getting together and having a, a good time uh, yesterday. So if there are no other announcements, we will move to agenda item seven, which is uh, the city manager's report. Adam Pulitzer. Uh, thank you, Mayor and council members. Um, you stole my thunder there with the uh, Halloween event. Uh, I would like to just uh, thank um, Lois, uh, Lois Porter and Kiera Owens, who are the director and co-director of, or um, a deputy director there of the ECDC, uh, bringing over 40 kids and all their parents uh, to City Hall is no easy task, um, but uh, all smiles as they came into the building and left and thanks to the council members that were able to attend and, and all the staff uh, making it a real special uh, afternoon for our trick-or-treaters and also appreciate mother nature holding off the rain for one day so all the families could enjoy a full day of festivities um, as council member medina, medina uh, martinez had mentioned earlier um, the harvest festival on saturday was also a big hit um, with spectacular weather a great turnout um, fan favorite was the pool full of pumpkins uh, would like to uh, recognize Kim Burroughs and Rebecca uh, Cermino uh, for their leadership on that effort. Uh, it was 100% staff participated, uh, all helping and working together to pull off the event. Uh, and great to see our firefighters and police officers out there supporting it amongst uh, many other organizations um, throughout the city. So just a, a terrific event for, for our community. Uh, as, as you know, we have um, uh, are starting the recruitment uh, now of the finance director, now that uh, the council is moving forward with its city manager. Uh, so that brochure should be out in the public this week and soliciting uh, candidates uh, with the intentions to hold interviews in December and, and, then, uh, and then look to fill that position sometime in early January. Uh, we're also opening up now the uh, community services director position. So we'll be advertising uh, that position here in the next week or so. Um, again, with the intent to uh, interview candidates at the beginning of December and moving forward with that appointment here in early January as well, if not sooner. Um, that's the end of my report, uh, council members, and uh, ha happy to answer any questions from you all. Um, and thank you um, for your time. Does anyone have a question on the city manager's report? I had one last item I forgot, it's on my notepad and I somehow missed it. I have one other small announcement, which is not small, uh, which is I wanna give a very special uh, thanks and congratulations to Navarre Oaks, to Assistant City Attorney Christy Crowell, 
to our housing programs director, Valerie Bernardo, to our economic and community development uh, director, Chad Smalley, and to all of our partners and friends at PlaceWorks in particular, because we submitted a draft housing element and on the first turnaround, we received no comments and we were told that it is ready for submission. Um, I'm only aware of one other city in the state right now that has had that happen. And uh, it's our friends in the city of Alameda actually. And so I just wanna congratulate uh, our staff for being totally on top of the housing element in compliance with all the state guidance, all the regional guidance that's been provided to us, um, all the council input that's been received, the community and co committee input that's been received, and to do the work that you've done to um, put us in a position where our housing element is deemed fully compliant on our first draft is uh, fantastic work and it is nothing short of emblematic of what our staff do in the city is produce high quality results so i just want to thank all of those staff members whether they're here or not today on behalf of the council um, for putting us in that posture because um, together we are a really really great team and so just really grateful to all of you for that um, from moving on from that we are going to go now to ex parte communications members are there any items on tonight's agenda which you'd like to report in ex parte communication about before we move into um, the agenda items no um, i have to report uh, that i've had a conversation or two on 11.2 um, with uh, e scooter championships and uh, some of the folks you'll meet this evening so i have i've had conversations with um, the proposed uh, partners for 11.2 we'll meet momentarily um, okay, that moves us to public comment. So now is the time for public comment for the consent calendar, as well as items that are not on tonight's agenda. So a member of the public who wishes to comment on this agenda will get uh, three minutes to do so. And April, I would like to first recognize Brian Donahue for three minutes, please. Good evening. Okay, I would like to take issue with the mayor's uh, observation that this staff has done a bang up job on the revised draft housing element project. As a matter of fact, uh, I would say just the opposite. And need evidence? Here it is. Okay, we recently learned that the, that the through the draft revi revision of the housing element that the city is pushing this concept whereby the city of Emeryville is going to grow by 183% our population in the years 2020 to 2040. But we also learned from the city of Emeryville that Berkeley is going to grow during the same years by 9%. Realize against this backdrop, we have exceeded our market rate RENA numbers every implementation period for the past couple of decades. Whereas Berkeley, uh, I think has only done it once. They rarely, if, if ever, meet their arena market rate housing numbers. So they have not been growing enough, according to ABAG. Whereas Emeryville has been exceeding our, our uh, recommendations for growth, especially in market rate housing. So why is it that we need to grow 183% uh, in the next 20 years, whereas Berkeley only needs to grow 9%? That's a good question. That's a question that people of Emeryville would naturally have. That's a really good question. I mean, we are, we, we are interested in our housing policy. So I asked this question. I was invited to ask it. Me and everybody in the city of Emeryville were invited to ask questions, make comments about the, the, the revision of the housing element. So I asked that question and the Charlie Bryant, the head of the planning department refuses to answer. So then I took that, that information to the, uh, Adam Pollitzer, the, the city manager, could you please get Mr. Bryan to answer this question uh, about the, the growth and how, how it's determined that that's how much growth we need to have? And Mr. Pollitzer said, uh, no, he would not do that. He said that, uh, that my questions are not questions. Instead, it's I'm, I'm inviting a debate and we, they won't do a debate. But a debate is not, questions are not a debate. Questions are questions. And so my questions are still, that, that one I just told you is still outstanding. I would like to ask the mayor to ask the city manager to allow questions to be asked about the revision of the housing element. I mean, this is our public policy. Public policy belongs to us. It doesn't belong to the people in city hall, it's public. So we have a right to know about our housing element. And, uh, and th these are legitimate and reasonable questions. So I ask the mayor to please 
ask the city manager to allow questions to be asked uh, uh, of the housing element revision. If you could do that, Mr. Bowders, I would greatly appreciate it. And so would uh, everybody else in Emeryville. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to comment on the consent calendar or items not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, I will just note for the record that the housing element has not been adopted and will come before the city council at a time that staff have it prepared between now and the deadline in which it's due. For which period of time there will be additional public comment in the public hearing where members of the public can continue to ask questions if they feel that those questions haven't been satisfactorily answered. Okay, we will move now to uh, item number 10, which is the consent calendar. Members, are there any items on the consent calendar tonight, which is items 10.1 through 10.12 inclusive that you would like to ask questions about or pull for further consideration or debate? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I will entertain a motion on the consent calendar. Motion of consent. Second. Okay, a motion by Vice Mayor Medina and a second by Council Member Donahue to approve the consent calendar. Items 10.1 through 10.12 inclusive. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. Thank you, members. Those are item, those items are approved. Item 11.1 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Emeryville approving and consenting to an agreement of employment between the management of Emeryville Services Authority and Paul Budenhagen as City Manager and authorizing the Chair of the Board of Directors to execute said agreement on behalf of Mesa and the City. And I would like to ask if we could please promote Mr. Budenhagen to the dais and put him on video. And while we do that, I would just like to ask, since uh, we had this presentation earlier, but we have two agencies that need to take this action. Um, Ms. Raver, would you please give a brief staff report on this item? Yes. Adam Pollitzer has been serving as the interim city manager since August 1st, while an executive search was in process to fill the city manager position on a permanent basis. The executive search produced over 25 candidates with an extensive interview process for those selected as best qualified. Paul Budenhagen was selected to fill the city manager position as his qualifications most closely met the needs of the city. An employment agreement with the terms and conditions of Mr. Budenhagen's employment are attached to the proposed resolution recommending the city council's approval and consent to Mesa appointing Paul Budenhagen as city manager beginning on January 17th, 2023. Thank you. At this time, what I'd like to do is, before we meet Paul, we're going to take the action, actually. We're going to call for public comment. Members of the public who wish to comment on this item will get two minutes to do so. Madam Clerk, please recognize Brian Donahue for two minutes. Okay, I would like this take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Bud Buddenhagen. Is that, is, that, is that how you pronounce it? Buddenhagen? Okay, I'll get it right. I would like to welcome you to Emeryville. My name is Brian Donahue. I am the editor of the Emeryville Tattler, which is an online um, news source about mostly politics in Emeryville. But I, I would like to make a request of you to please be, uh, be, uh, be open to transparent and accountable. As you can see, there was a little problem here tonight where earlier moments ago, I was expressing to, uh, to Mr. Um, Bowders, the mayor, to ask him, asking him to intervene because there's a problem with the current city manager not being, not allowing citizens to ask questions about the housing element. I, I, I hope, sir, that you are, are not of that uh, sort of ilk, and I hope, hope that you're going to be open and transparent, and I hope that you will allow the public to ask questions about their, their policy, especially housing policy which is at the center of what, you know, kind of we do in Emeryville's housing is really important. And I'm hoping that people have questions, you will see to it that the questions are answered and everyone under, understands their public policy and uh, maybe not be on board, but, uh, but at least understand. And that, that's what I'm hoping that you, your term here as our city, new city manager will be like. Thank you very much. And again, welcome to Emeryville. Thank you for your comment. Are there other members of the public who wish to comment on this item? April, do you receive any written comment cards for this item? No, Mayor, we did not. Okay, well, what I'd like to do is, uh, would members like to take the action or talk to Paul first? 
Let's take the point. action first. Okay, that's fine. So at this point, there's a there's a, a resolution in front of you, item 11.1. .1. Is there any discussion? Members, I would like to place a motion on the table to approve this resolution. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion by Mayor Bowders and a second by Vice Mayor Medina to approve this resolution. Please call the roll. Councilmember Donahue. Aye. Councilmember Martinez. Aye. Councilmember Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye. The resolution is approved. And on behalf of the City Council and the Mesa Board, I look forward to signing a contract with you, Paul, and I want, rather than do a bio and uh, take all the time away from you, I'd like to offer you the opportunity and platform now to introduce yourself to the city of Emeryville. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Bowders. Thank you, and uh, thank you to the full council for your confidence in me as your next city manager. I am absolutely thrilled uh, to be joining the team. I also want to thank uh, Interim City Manager Adam Pulitzer and HR Director Trish Raver for your professionalism and responsiveness throughout this process. It's been very appreciated. Um, I um, am just excited to, to listen and jump in and meet people and work as part of the team to execute your vision as a council. Um, I'm very excited by it. I met all of the department heads, almost all of the department heads um, throughout this process. And I met a bunch of staff as well as member Martinez at the at the Harvest Festival this weekend, which was a terrific event. I really enjoyed myself. It was an impressive event and uh, have been very impressed with the staff that I, I have met. And also I've lived in um, the 94608 for two decades. And so um, I've been a long time admirer of the city of Emeryville. I've benefited also greatly, uh, as has my family, by living in the 94608 and being able to avail myself of uh, a lot of the wonderful things that Emeryville has to offer. So um, I won't go on and on, but I will just say I am super excited to join this team. I um, look forward to rolling up my sleeves and um, helping move your vision forward. And uh, we'll just close with that. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Rick. Members, is there anything that any of you would like to say? Oh, Allie. We just want to warmly welcome you. We're very excited to have you on the team. Scott. Welcome here. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our town. Diane. I'm, I'm sorry I played my hand at the Harvest Festival. I think I, <laughs> I didn't say I'm going to vote yes on the resolution, but I, I might have been a little too friendly. But now that um, it's passed, Warm welcome, so glad to have you uh, working for Emeryville. Really, really pleased um, that, we're, that was um, hot competition. So really glad that you applied and um, I think it's a perfect fit. Thank you. And I'll just add that um, as a testament to the quality of work that Paul has done, he, he, he folks in the community will learn more about him as he comes on board here. But um, I received, uh, how do I say this nicely? several strongly worded text messages and phone calls from Berkeley council members saying, stop stealing our favorite employees. <laughs> so, so uh, um, I don't think we, I don't think we, I don't think we still, I think that we were a match made to be. So um, I'm very excited that you'll be coming on Paul and um, know that you'll get to spend some time with Adam and the other members of our staff, as well as the council members um, before you come on board fully in January and it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're already having fun and I'm sure it will be, it'll be great for the city going forward. So your uh, enthusiasm and your professional expertise are very welcome here and we look forward to having you full time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, all uh, right, we're gonna move on with that. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, Paul. I know that the Berkeley Council meeting is not as fun as ours, so, you know, things to look forward to. <laughs> Tell everyone in Berkeley I said that, all right. So let's see, we'll move on to item 11.2 members. Uh, the next item is a resolution of the city council of the city of Emeryville appointing two council members to be an ad hoc subcommittee for planning the ESC e-scooter championship, the Emeryville event, and authorizing the city manager to execute a non-binding letter of intent to negotiate and enter into an event hosting agreement with WES management. And I am super excited about this item and uh, Adam, Chad, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce, can we, can we put, 
Um, I don't know if they want to be on camera. We have Richard and Khalil here from London. Um, are you guys off mute? Do you guys want to be on camera? Yeah, well, it's okay for us. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Can we? Can we? promote them with uh with camera i i didn't promote them that way i think i need to move them back because they're not actually panelists they're just allowed to talk so i don't know that i have that power but hold on a second mayor let me try okay no problem go ahead and move them back and see if we can make them panelists instead and then um, everyone can meet richard and khalil and as by way of background while that's going on i'll just um uh i'm not going to do a long introduction i'm just going to um, let everybody know that we're going to receive a presentation about an extremely exciting opportunity to be the first city in the United States to host an event. And um, we're going to hear about that. And uh, Chad will also be able to provide some. There's Khalil. Good evening. Well, good morning to you. Um, and uh, we'll get the chance to ask questions and we'll take comment and discuss. And there is Richard. All right, guys. Well, welcome. Good evening, Chad. Is there anything else uh, before that they present their slideshow? Uh, no, I mean, I, I was just going to review what's in the staff report and you, you summed it up well. So thank you for that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and so we have their slideshow loaded to put on the share screen and we'll let them take it from here. All right, guys, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Walter, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, we are uh, eScooter Championship. We are the first micro mobility world championship. We started the eScooter Championship back uh, of during, uh, just before the pandemic. The idea was we could see the sector of micro mobility and the eScooter sector moving really fast, and actually in the US, especially. And we thought the best way to develop a new sector of mobility is to compete. And then I come from a racing background. I raced all kinds of single seater cars up to Formula One. My, my co-founders as well are coming with big uh, uh, experience from racing. And we learned a lot that it, uh, from car racing, the motorsport developed a lot on safety infrastructure and legislation. So this is why we started the e-scooter. We saw that the e-scooters back in 2018, 2019 were exactly where cars used to be in 1910 and 1920. And uh, yeah, we, a lot of cities don't know what to do with them. People, some of them, the younger generation loves them. The other, the, some other people consider them dangerous. So the best way is we, if we race them, we become the lab to develop the new sector. So if we can move through the next slide. We started the e-scooter championship back in uh, 2019. We launched the officially the championship this year. 2022 is our first season of racing. We raced in London. We raced in Switzerland. We have a lot of um, cities uh, coming on board for next season. Uh, next week, we are doing our last race in France, in Marseille. It's a new sport for new generation. ESC is the first inclusive racing series. We have boys and girls. It's gender neutral racing against each other in the middle of cities we are here our racing series is inspiring a new movement for safer sustainable and more livable cities our riders who they are i can tell you when we move to the next slide we have started the we've done a lot of testing and a lot of training programs and we saw this is a very very difficult sport it's very physical uh, five minutes maximum the riders can stay on the scooters and if we move to the next slide we can see we have at the moment olympians bronze and gold medalist olympians this is the scooter by the way it's basically we've done a lot of testing on safety uh, and on racing of course and this it reached 100 km per hour it can reach more by the way uh, it's a, a twin motor is developed by formula one teams and by the best in the sector at the moment in car and in the mobility industry and the racing industry the leaning angle is reaching more than 60 percent now after we started racing it's only 40 kilograms and um, yeah if you can see the names on the right side it's all developed with we're always thinking sustainability here so the bodywork is made from the very natural materials uh, williams f1 develop our battery which is completely recyclable and it's what we want to do we want to be uh, driving the mobility micro mobility sector to be very sustainable so our batteries are uh, are recyclable the bodywork is done from natural fiber natural fiber and then if we look at the tires we are developing at the moment a very eco eco tire it's made for, from uh, uh, vegetable oil at the moment and then if we go to the next slide, our riders are worldwide riders coming from different backgrounds. So we have Olympians, we have world champions, 
these are some examples. We have gold medalists and world champions here. They are competing against each other. They are coming from balance sport, from car, ra from car racing, and from motorcycle racing. So it's a really nice mix of 30 athletes uh, between 17 and 35 years old. Whoever, whoever was 17 this, this week became 18, actually. It's accessible, it's, uh, and then it's inclusive. This is the most important. We wanted to build a sport which is accessible for everybody. And we believe very strongly that females and males and any gender can compete against each other. And we have been succeeding with that. The first race was won by a freestyle world champion scooter. The second race was won by a female who comes from motorbike. So if we move to the next slide, we back in July, I saw Mayor, uh, your, your great mayor, Shambi, I became a big fan of, by the way. And then uh, I saw he tweeted a tweet saying, our roads are closed for NASCAR and car racing, but we are open for any other series. So I just had to tweet for him directly. I said, name the date and you will come to Emeryville. And I was serious about it because the US is a big market for us. We knew after the COVID, as soon as the rest of the world will open, we're not going to stay in Europe. We are a world championship. We are global. So, and we're looking for our right partners. And we want to race in places where we are singing and singing the same song. So I, I could, I start looking more and more the same evening, uh, what uh, Mayor Bowser is doing there. We became a big fan and I said, listen, this is what we do. We are here to develop this sector. We are here to play a big part in the micro mobility sector, which can be in every city, whatever we do, the new generation wants it. And uh, I explained what we do. We are not just here to do a racing series. We are here also to develop safe riders. We are here to help infrastructure. We are here to give you the safety we are learning from racing to give them to cities to start developing the safe rider of tomorrow, to start developing the right infrastructure, the right speed, where to use them, how to use them. So there is so much happening. I don't have, I don't have time now in 10 minutes to say about them. We started a very positive conversation. I've sent a lot of details to to, uh, to, uh, to to the mayor and then uh, it was very ex very exciting to see someone already absorbing what we are we are trying to do and then we start looking at some cool areas and the conversation is very positive so far and we are hoping we can continue it in a positive way and i am really really hoping we can come and race in your street and also work together to develop the infrastructure safety and the safe riders of tomorrow because we have so many cool programs for kids from four years old up to 11, how to use a scooter in the safe way. And nothing is better than develop the safe rider of tomorrow. I will leave it for Rich to continue uh, more on the commercial side, but yeah, if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, sure. So yeah, following on from hello, you know, this season was our launch season. And in Europe, as you said, we raced in, uh, in London, in the UK. Uh, we then went to Switzerland, where we held the only motorsport event of the year. Um, and next week we'll be in France where we'll hold our season finale events and for us in 2023 we are expanding into into new markets and new regions and it's definitely a key priority for us to bring the sport to the USA and North America more broadly um, you know it's a key market uh, and region for both racing and motorsport events and we're going to be focused on growing our audience and awareness in that market so yeah, the opportunity to host our, you know, one of our debut events in the US in Emeryville, something that has a really strong alignment in the values that we want to communicate. Um, and we think it will enable us to deliver a long term impact. So um, as Khalil said, you know, through our conversations to date with the mayor, um, you know, we're convinced that an ESC event in Emeryville um, has a really strong uh, platform to build on. Um, there's already some great work that's being done there around transportation and new mobility options that we really want to help to amplify and to communicate that on our global broadcast and through our social media platforms and as our you know to our audience in the us as we develop that together as well um and i guess another point is you know that we're passionate about the sustainability element of our event and putting that at the core of of what we promote and i think that is linked to making this an accessible sport and you know it's something that we have discussed in ensuring that the event we hold in emeryville will be accessible we want it to be for everyone um, we want to work together on how we program that so that we make sure that we create objectives that we will work towards that will actually deliver um, a legacy and an impact for Emeryville as a city. So, yeah, I think we can probably go on to the next slide. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, building on from that in terms of the objectives that, that we've discussed today and that we'd like to focus on, the first is that championing micro mobility element. 
in terms of showcasing you know cycle paths and, and routes in cities and using that as a case study that can be communicated um, at our b2b events and with key stakeholders across the u.s showcasing that emeryville you know is is at the front of that of building the city for tomorrow which is essentially what we're looking to achieve with our sport long term as well um, that obviously links into it the sustainable transport objective you know whilst the event will happen on one weekend in the year and have some content throughout the week we'd actually like to to have this as a year-round partnership where we can have things that are happening throughout the year communicating all of those um you know key projects that are happening in emeryville and showcasing exactly what's happening there um, which i think leads us to the last objective of really showcasing emeryville as a, as a smart city um, i think it already is a smart city and it's definitely got you know plans and objectives in the future that we want to help to um to progress uh, next slide please uh, i'll hand back over to Khalil. yeah we will uh, we always deliver an action-packed event so basically we our circuits are not very big so we are talking about two to three hundred meters so we come set up and leave within one week not more with our racing but we we do a lot during that week we 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 basically want to do Wherever we go, we do a lot of school activities, community outreach, we do a lot of programs with kids, we do a lot of stuff for the media because our broadcast, as you will see in the next page, we reach more than 400 million at the moment households around the world. So we want to work together with the city to do like a, really some good media packages. And we have the My Community Forum, which has been super successful. The, it brings all the players of my community from my manufacturers to insurance companies to etc. to work with the city on the next steps of micro mobility. We have uh, music, we have entertainment, we have a good fan zone where everybody, uh, it's a family day where people come, enjoy and educate themselves in a fun way about micro mobility. The racing is Friday and Saturday. And uh, yeah, Sunday is where we pack and uh, we try to pack and leave as soon as possible without disrupting. Uh, next slide. Yeah, I think as Khalil mentioned there, in terms of our broadcast, um, yeah, we are with a lot of the major broadcasters. We have ESPN coverage in the US. We were on the Ocho show uh, recently that, um, that happened on the 8th of August uh, across the US. But then we've also got, you know, BBC in the UK, being sports across the Middle East. We have NBC Action, um, various others in, in key markets um, around the world. Um, but maybe we can just move to the next slide, uh, which enables us to kind of wrap up because I'm conscious that we've already taken about 10 minutes. Um, Go ahead, you're fine. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I think probably just to summarize you know, the, the key benefits that we want to, to bring to Emeryville with our event and the overall event partnership, you know, the first is promoting Emeryville to an international audience. Um, so, you know, utilizing all of the host city branding rights that will be in there. So we will ensure that city, city of Emeryville is integrated into, um, into the event, into the track. Um, they'll be in some of the most valuable areas on the track to promote the city and showcase that it's being held there. We'll be creating bespoke content that will go in there. So we'll be showcasing different areas of the city. Uh, we can create destination marketing uh, content that will also be you know, geotagged on our social media content and through our digital platforms. Um, there's also the economic impact um, that we'll aim to deliver over the event weekend. So you know, hosting the event in Emeryville, we want to be drawing people in from um, you know, within the city, but also outside of the city regionally and potentially international visitors as well. And our plan is you know, really to work on a multi-year basis and try to develop the audience in the market and showcase all of the, um, all of the things that Emeryville has to offer and, and to grow that over time and to ensure that we're constantly building on, on that impact that we're delivering. Um, and the final two points are more around the kind of event objectives and social impact that we're looking to deliver. So what we mentioned earlier around amplifying everything that's already happening in Emeryville, we want to use the event as you know, the pinnacle moment in the year for micro mobility and, and other new mobility forms to really showcase those um, and to, to deliver programs together. So the schools and education program is something that you know, we're, all very, we're all very passionate about at eScooter Championship. And we think it's you know, really important for kids that are using push scooters to go um, to go to school, that we're ensuring that they have a route um, in a sport that can work for them, but also just to ensure that there's the opportunity for everyone to participate and use it as a, um, you know, as a, a form of entertainment and, and socialising. So I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add, Khalil? No, basically, I think um, 
it would be great if we can uh, make this happen because it's it just shows the forward thinking i think to put emeryville at the prime position like it's a city which is forward thinking about the new sector it's a sector which cannot come everywhere around the world we have we know and the studies are happening right now all the all the car industry is looking at micro mobility and e-scooters and this is the sector of tomorrow so we want to build for the next generation a great place to enjoy if they want to race they will have a place to race safe and exciting and cool we are building a very accessible sport for them but also the most important is build the safe rider of tomorrow enjoy the just to go out ride a scooter in the safe way and there are, and yeah we develop it all together and this will be i'm pretty sure if it happens mlb will be the first city hopefully in america to do this because there are a lot of conversations happening right now in north america and a lot of cities following up Is there one more slide? Uh, it's just uh, the last slide. To... There we go. All right. We can take the slideshare down. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> we're going to take questions from council members in a moment. But first, we'll open it for um, public comment. Uh, and we'll give uh, members of the public two minutes to speak on this item if they have any comments. And do we receive any written comment cards? We did not, Mayor. Okay, public comments closed. Before we go to questions, I'll just add a couple. Uh, I'll just add a couple facts, which is um, what we're asking for tonight is to enter into a letter of intent of our intent to um, move forward with something that could come back to the council in a few months as a formal agreement. So there's not a. This is a non-binding request this evening. Um, we've had a series of meetings. I appreciate the work of. Uh, John Kennedy, Christy Crowell, Adam Pulitzer, Pedro Jimenez, and Chad uh, Smalley for um, assisting in having and developing those conversations with eScooter as we've moved through discussions about what a legal arrangement and a revenue sharing agreement could look like if the council was interested in pursuing this event. I will note that the last time Emeryville was the first to do something in the international sports stage was May 29th, 1920 which was the very first U.S. Greyhound racetrack in the United States, um, which was uh, originally there was a Greyhound racetrack built in Emeryville in 1919, and it was taken down and rebuilt in 1920 um, to incorporate the mechanical rabbit, uh, which was considered a humane alternative to the practices that were used in the United Kingdom that had uh, raised the ire and spectacle of many um, well-to-do Americans who were concerned about rabbits being consumed by greyhounds on a live track in front of a live audience. And the Blue Star Amusement Park uh, was the venue for that here in Emeryville. And I, ironically, I live in the Blue Star uh, <laughs> townhomes, which is located where the Greyhound track used to be. Um, but here we are 102 years later. And uh, again, people from England have showed up. <laughs> again, they have a sport that is looking to um, looking to take, take hold here in the United States. And again, they're in Emeryville. Um, history repeats itself in funny ways. Um, so the idea is that if the council would like to create an ad hoc committee to keep working on this, uh, this item, we would um, do some additional development both on what a legal arrangement would look like. There is a, um, there is a provision that would require us to uh, raise revenue um, in order to do this. Um, so to be transparent, it would be uh, about one to one and a half million dollars uh, for us to find sponsorships to help cover the cost of putting um, this this race on. It is in town for um, a number of days as was shown on the one slide, which includes a number of satellite events and supportive um, venues that engage uh, families, kids. There's a family day on the track after the races are done. Uh, we've talked about having an Alameda County Mayor's race with some prizes for micromobility grants. Like there's a lot of fun things we could do with this. And uh, I really didn't believe Khalil when he first reached out to me. I was like, this is, I'm totally being punked. <laughs> it's like, there's no way this guy in London is calling me about doing this thing here. Uh, but they're legitimate. And I got to, I was over at the Dutch Mobility Tour and I met Richard in Amsterdam over lunch one day. And we were able to continue this conversation and um, it's been moving forward since. Um, but now is the point where you have to decide uh, whether you want that to continue. and. I would like to just open it. If you have questions for either of them or for staff, please just raise your hand. I can recognize you. Scott. 
could we follow through with tradition and be able to have gambling involved in this sport? We're talking history, repeating history, John. You want to place bets on the scooter racers is what you're saying. Well, I'm just <laughs> saying. Scott, we, we, we'll take your question offline to Mr. Kennedy's office. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should investigate. <laughs> Uh, we there's sports sports betting we will we will we will get you an answer on that question fair enough do you have other questions scott no that that's well i i have a lot of technical questions but i don't want to take up too much time with this okay i mean exciting technical questions i think it's an exciting sport excellent vice mayor medina uh the designation of smart cities implies the existence of dumb cities are you willing to name some cities that you think are dumb <laughs> I told you guys it was not going to be easy. The question should be whatever comes to their mind. <laughs> the cities that aren't doing e-scooters, Allie, I think that's the safe answer. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. <laughs> Do you have other questions? No. No, that, that was honestly inspired by Member Donahue, our first ever mayor's conference. A council member from an Alameda County city that I will not name, name said, we are transitioning to be a smart city. And Scott, without the student, he goes, so you're currently a dumb city? I just had to walk away. Well, okay. So, so Scott, being Scott, uh, just as we thought. Diane, do you have questions? I don't have any questions. I have comments. But... Go ahead. Oh, I just, I, I am a, a verified electric scooter owner. Um, and I'm extremely excited to have you in town. Uh, obviously, I will have questions, but I will no longer be on the council when this is all unfolding, but I will be a very excited member of the community um, rooting for my favorite racers, I'm sure, and trying to get on the track for family day. Staff, is there anything that, or Mr. Smalley, anybody that you'd sure. like? Yeah, go ahead. Well, just to put a bow on it, if, if, that, if that concludes, the questions from the council. I, I just do want to point out this is a this is a unique opportunity for for Emeryville to get some recognition on a global stage through an event, but not just any event. It's an event that aligns with our brand and aligns with our values, and so it's really a Goldilocks moment. Um, our brand of you know we're the city of art and innovation, and a lot of innovation in transport comes out of motorsport and competition. And to be at the forefront of that in the micro mobility space is a really exciting opportunity. So what we've done is the, the resolution attached to the staff report asks for two actions in one resolution. Uh, we're asking that you name an ad hoc subcommittee to work directly with staff, since this is a fast moving activity and there's a lot of details yet to work out. Um, and as well as authorize the city manager to execute that non-binding letter of intent, which will form the basis uh, of an agreement, an event hosting agreement that we'll bring back to the full council at a later date once it's fully negotiated. Um, so we'd ask for you to name a couple of members to the ad hoc subcommittee and to authorize that uh, letter of intent and that staff's recommendation on this matter this evening. Thanks. And I'll just thank you, Chad, and I'll just add, add to what Chad said. There's um, you know, we've, we've done just to show that we've spent some time thinking about this, you know, the values of this sport as was put on the slideshow this evening, you know, were equity, accessibility and sustainability. And those, one of the things, the very first conversations I had with our, our friends here from London was how our city's values really line up well with the vision for this sport and this competition um, and how we embody those values in the things that we do at policy level here. And I think that the sponsors that we would solicit for um, kind of headlining this event would be Emeryville companies innovating in sustainability, innovating in equity and accessibility. I won't name them here today so as not to create, you know, ins and outs, but um, there's a lot of partners here in the community who are really innovating, who um, or in our life science core and other places that we, we have within the city. And I think this is an amazing opportunity, as Chad noted, to elevate them to a more global platform, which only serves to benefit us and our business partners uh, and really put Emeryville, um, we're already on the map as the life sciences hub in the Bay Area in California, but to really just to, to elevate who we are. Um, and I think that just brings further innovation and talent to this 
community. It also brings um, an exciting, fun, and creative class, and which really marries it back to the the moniker of, of City of Art and Innovation. So, um, for those reasons, I'm going to put a motion on the table to approve this resolution, and I'm going to make that motion um, and suggest that the ad hoc committee be myself and Vice Mayor Medina. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, there's a motion by uh, Mayor Bowders, seconded by Councilmember Martinez to approve this resolution with the letter of intent and create an ad hoc committee between Mayor Bowders and Vice Mayor Medina to continue work on this item. Please call the roll. Councilmember Donahue? Aye. Councilmember Martinez? Aye. Councilmember Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye, the resolution is approved. Gentlemen, we'll see you at the next Wednesday morning meeting. Well, morning for us and evening for you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, for thank time. you so much. Thank you. All right, we look forward to working together and getting this uh, show on the track, as they say. Okay. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. I cannot tell you how excited I am about that. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. Go back to sleep. Thanks for your time. <laughs> All right, item 11.3 is a resolution of the city council making the required findings to continue holding remote meetings pursuant to AB 361. There's no presentation. Is there public comment on this item? Seeing no public comment, is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by council member Martinez, second by council member Donahue to approve the resolution. Please call the roll. Council member Donahue. Aye. Council member Martinez. Aye. Council member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye, thank you. The resolution is approved. Item 11.4 is the adoption of the 2022 California Building Standards Code and local amendments. Members, is there any objection to my request to waive presentation? Nope. No, presentation is waived. This is a, there's two parts to this. There's two separate ordinances that we have to approve. Uh, members of the public who wish to comment on 11.4.1 or 11.4.2 will have three minutes to do so. Is there any member of the public who wishes to comment on this item? Do we receive any written comments for this item? No, we did not, Mayor. Okay, public comment is now closed. Members, I will entertain. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, do we need to have a motion to read by title only for each of them separately? Yes, there are two okay. separate resolutions. Okay, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to read by title only on 11.4.1. Motion to read by title only. Oh, I'll second. Okay, motion by Martinez, second by Medina to read by title only for 11.4.1. Please call the roll. Councilmember Donahue? Aye. Councilmember Martinez? Aye. Councilmember Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. Motion is approved. Mr. Kennedy? An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Emeryville repealing and replacing chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 and 10 of Title 8 of the Emeryville Municipal Code entitled Building Regulations and Making Required Findings Related to the Adoption and Amendment of the California Building Standards Code, CEQA Determination, Exempt Pursuant to CEQA Guidelines Sections 15061B3 and 15378, Subsection B, Subsection 2, and Subsection 5. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. At this time, I'll entertain a motion on the ordinance. It moves. Thank you. Motion by Vice Mayor Medina, second by Council Member Donahue to approve this ordinance. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. That ordinance is approved. Item 11.4.2. I'll entertain a motion to read by title only. Motion to read by title only. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Medina, second by Council Member Donahue to read by title only. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue? Aye. Council Member Martinez? Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina? Aye. And Mayor Bowders? Aye. Mr. Kennedy? An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Emeryville repealing and replacing Chapter 5 of Title 4 of the Emeryville Municipal Code entitled Fire Code and making required findings related to the adoption and amendment of the California Building Standards Code, CEQA determination exempt pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 
15061 subsection B, subsection 3, and 15378 subsection B, subsection 2, and subsection 5. Okay, I'll entertain a motion on the ordinance. I moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Medina, second by Council Member Donahue to approve the ordinance. Please call the roll. Council Member Donahue. Aye. Council Member Martinez. Aye. Council Member Welch is absent. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. And Mayor Bowders. Aye, thank you, that is approved. Item 12 is the department heads reports and we have a planning director's report from the commission meeting of October 27th, Mr. Smalley. Thank you, Mayor Bowders, Chad Smalley, Deputy Director of Community Development, uh, standing in for Charlie this evening as he's on vacation. Uh, planning Commission met most recently on Thursday, October 27th last week. Commissioner Henry um, had an excused absence. There were six commissioners present, which is a quorum. Uh, four items total on that agenda, one study session, one uh, FDP or final development permit approval, and two major sign permits. The first item was a study session on the 5850 Shellmont Life Sciences Tower. Um, commission had a great discussion and included a, a number of constructive comments and suggestions for the development team. Um, that, uh, that proposal will be coming back to the City Council in study session form in the future. Second item was the public hearing on the final development plan for marketplace parcels A and B. Uh, Commissioner uh, Gitzoni was recused for that item and that was approved unanimously 5-0 uh, with some minor modifications to the conditions of approval. Major, first major sign permit uh, was for two monument signs and three wall signs for the Ratio Business Center, which is at 64th and Hollis. Uh, Commissioner David Morrow was uh, recused on that item and the commission approved that application unanimously. And then finally, uh, the major sign permit for a monument sign and two wall signs at Bay Street, also approved unanimously by the, the uh, commission. The decisions on the marketplace A and B FDP and the two major sign permits are appealable to the city council within 15 days so by friday november 11th and if the city council wishes to appeal any of these items to yourselves this is the opportunity to do so and that's all i have thank you chad are there any questions on any of the planning commission updates or reports and is there any member who wishes to appeal any of the decisions of the planning commission that are appealable within 15 days to the council Seeing none, the council will not exercise its decision to appeal any of those items and we'll move now to item 13, which is future agenda items or requests from council members. Are there any members here tonight who have a future agenda item request? Seeing none, there is no future agenda items requested this evening. Madam Clerk, the time is 8.31. This meeting is adjourned. I hope all of you have a lovely evening and we will see you on November 15th for our next council meeting. Be well. Go outside.